on my computer. All right. Are we going live? Yes, yeah. Sir. Welcome to the Martell Ice Griffin Boxing Show. In my right corner, former light heavyweight champion of the world, Martell. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, Ice. My bad. I mean, I got to add your title, big guy. My fault. <laughs> my, my fault, man. I got to add your title. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> hey, we're going to get through the rough patch. Well, everybody knows him. Everybody knows him. Macho Griffin. The chap. They don't, know, <laughs> they don't know me like they know you, but. <laughs> Bro, I, I got so much. To, I, I'm going to save it for the show. I got so much to say to you, boy. Let me see. Hold on, let me put that spelling in. I want to get that spelling right, fellas. Yeah, um, could you, could you write it down right now? I'm going to do a show. Could you write it down? I'll text, I'll text you anything you need to know. Write down my cell phone number. Text me yourself. I mean, yeah, text me 702-400-295. Y'all going to see it go live before me, all right? Yeah, could you text me? I'm doing, I'm doing a radio show right now. You text me. Welcome to the Martell Griffin Ice Boxing Show with your host, former light heavyweight champion of the world, Martell Ice Griffin, and his special guest. The former batting weight champion of the world, Orlando Canizales. What's up, fellas? What's going on with it, man? What's up, man? Everything good, man. Uh, we had to start off on the Tuesday again because of some technical difficulties, but we back in the show, and um, I got a very special guest. Very special guest. Uh, let's just break it down. The best batting weight. Oh, no, no. The greatest bantamweight in boxing history, Orlando Canizales. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Bow down, champ. Thank you. Welcome thank to you the show, much. Mr. Orlando Canizales. I heard so much about you. I studied you. Martel love you to death. He said, Bob, I got him. I got the right guy. So without further ado, Iceman, do your thing, big baby. Well, Bro, thank, you for, uh, thank you for inviting me, having you on your show. I appreciate it. Man, hey, it's an honor and a right pleasure. You. Uh, let me just tell you a little about, about our story. Uh, 1991, I moved to L.A. to start boxing. I walked in the Dominic Boxing Club. You had uh, Albert Davila, Marty Dinkin. Uh, uh, I forgot the uh, Chato, uh, trainer Chato. He trained uh, Reggie Johnson and Jesse Reed. Uh, Marty Dinkin uh, told Jesse, hey, why don't you, mess, you know, why don't you train this kid? I started training with Jesse every day. I was 210 pounds when I got to L.A. I was 20 years old, born on 21. Jesse Reed started training me, and um, I got going. I started winning and, you know, doing good things. My, my first two fights was at heavyweight. Uh, I got hit with a, a right hand at the bell, my second uh, heavyweight fight, and I said, I got to go down light heavyweight. I, I can't. I'm not big enough for these guys. So I went down light heavyweight, and as that was going on, Orlando Canizales was training for a fight, a world title fight. And uh, right outside of uh, Palm, uh, Palm Beach, uh, the Indio, California. And uh, Orlando came out there to fight. Well, he was in uh, L.A. first. Orlando, we, uh, how, many, how long did we, uh, you train there before you went to camp? Um, it was, how, how long was it over there? I'm saying, you can't remember, you, you came to L.A. We started off in L.A. Then we drove out to Palm Springs. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, but there's a dog is barking at. So. Sorry. Yeah. Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers can have dogs bark. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Uh, 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 I went to Frank for a, about a month. Okay. Okay, yeah. So just man, I um I knew who you were before I met you. But you know what I'm saying? You were just so smooth. You didn't mind, you know what I'm saying, us little peons to be in camp and hang out with you and you know, you know, I joke with you on Facebook, uh uh, Bob, when when you know when he make when fighters make weight, you know we want to eat some carbs. So most fighters eat pasta. Right, that's right. <laughs> I had never heard this before. I was only twenty one years old. This cat mm -hmm. said when he made weight, let's go to Pizza Hut, and I was like, that's even better because I'm a kid. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey, look, I'd rather go to Pizza Hut than some uh some uh fancy uh Italian restaurant. He said we going to Pizza. I eat Pizza Hut every time I make weight. I said, let's go, champ. And I, that just tickled me to death because I really wasn't crazy. You know, I'm from Chicago, Bob, so we got great pizza. Yeah. But Lamb and Brewster, he from Indianapolis. They don't, they don't know nothing about good pizza. He <laughs> loved, his, his favorite pizza was Pizza Hut. Yeah. That's, pizza that's, that's, that's like, not real pizza. Right, yeah. Pizza Hut to me is yeah. like fast food. <laughs> yeah. No disrespect, but yeah, I'm like, if, you, if you came to Chicago and some real pizza, you understand what I'm saying, but. For you to eat that Pizza Hut, I'm like, man, this dude a regular guy just like us. Yeah. Well, so I, I, to, I had to eat uh, pasta after the wings. Every time I fight, I would fight, I would eat pasta. It was the pizza or whatever, uh, of chicken or fell. It was just pasta. That's that's why, you know, I've always done that. Right. Right. Well, man, you uh, you broke the record, man, with uh, 15, uh, was it 15 or 16? 16. 16. 16 titles. 16 title defenses. Uh, you're a legend, man. You um, you are, are you the greatest band weight ever? I want to hear from you. <laughs> I mean, I know you're humble, but just say yeah. Well, I'm the greatest band weight ever. <laughs> okay, okay, don't be humble. Stop. Hey, 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 hey. could y'all explain that to the people who don't know what the bantam weight is? A bantam weight is 118 pounds. 118 okay. pounds max. When I'm in. And the amateurs is 119, so, 119, you, right. uh, so well, it used to be 119. They done messed up all the ways now. Yeah. When you turn pro, he only had to lose a pound. Right. And the amateur, my weight was 178, so I had to lose three pounds. So he had it easier than me. But, uh, like, the battle weights are not really respected in America like they should be. Um, usually, uh, guys at 26, 30 who knocking guys out start getting the respect. 26, okay. 130, you start moving up, uh, you're knocking guys out, you start getting respect. I never liked that. Bantamweights never really got the respect in America like they should have. Um, I, I remember, well, this was 25 years ago, I remember Jesse Reed telling me how much you made for a fight. And you say, he said, you the most highest paid Bantamweight. And I was like, that's good, but you could earn way more than that. Right. That, that, was just, that was just the market at the time. Right, right. Hey, can I ask him something, Lee? Um, I mean, Monty, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what made you get into boxing, though? How did you get your start? Uh, well, I was about, I was 10 years old. And my, actually, my brother, he was the one that started boxing. He's older than me, Gabby. He's the one that started boxing. And, uh, and uh, you know, he's like, he's five, five years older than me. So he went to the gym and, and you know, like I said, he started boxing. And I, uh, one day I, I just went with him. I tagged along and... And that's how I started, but it was mainly because of my brother Gabby. Wow. Yeah, okay. we started at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we lived like like two blocks away, two three blocks away from the Boys and Girls Club. And after school, we just go we we'll go to the gym like around five or six p.m. and uh, you know we just you know train. And that's how we started at the the Boys and Girls Club. So when when did you? Oh, did you ever? I don't know. I'm not gonna disrespect Gabby. Did you ever get the best of them? And when when did you get the best of them? What do you mean? But the best of him, like. I, I mean, y'all getting the ring spawn. He was he was a world champion before you. Uh, Bob, Gabby oh, yeah, Cavalli was, was the first world champion from Laredo. Right, so, right. So brother came behind him and won the world title. So when did you get in the ring with him? And and it was tiff attack, or you got the best of him? Oh well, we are we always sparred. We ever since our amateur years, uh, when we were amateurs, we we sparred a lot. I mean, we you know, like I said, uh, we sparred a lot with amateurs. Throughout the all the all the way to the professional level, and uh, you know we we sparred a lot. 
thousand rounds. We did, we did a lot of rounds. A thousand rounds? A lot of rounds. Who got the best of each other? Well, some days he had and some days I did, you know. It was just like, you know, depending. It's just like one of those days that sometimes, he, you know, but it was, I mean, you can tell, ask anyone, it, it, there were wars. I mean, it, it, there, was, there were wars. Uh, basically, we, you can say it was uh, even. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You, there's a guy, you, as you can see, a champion uh, that's very humble. <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to get it out of him, Bob. Okay, Orlando, when did you start – what year did you start taking over and you always got the best of? What year was that? Um, I don't know. I don't remember, but it probably didn't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I got a humble, I got a humble Hall of Famer. I, that don't even make that don't, hey, Humble and Hall of Famer don't go ahead and head. <laughs> come on, champ. Let's, come on, loosen up, champ. Hey, no, okay. Okay, you, you respect, you know, we got mad respect for Gabby Collins. I, I never met him, but uh, I got a chance to hang with his little brother. It, it, but Bob, you just don't understand. Uh, this, okay, just put you like this. Me and Lama Brewster, who were uh, amateur fighters being around Orlando, watching Orlando. Look, I stole all his moves. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I make a comment that Canelo – is the uh, sharpest and slickest Mexican ever. I got to say, I got to change it around a little bit because from one, you know, from 106 to 147, they were eight ounce gloves and 154 to heavyweight were uh, 10 ounce gloves. So I got to say, the best, the slickest, smallest Mexican, Mexican ever seen in my life was Orlando Canizales. Bro, I stole all his moves. The move to the right, the jump move to the right. Uh, it's just, you know, just angles, angles, angles. Jesse Reed had me watch Orlando. I watched him in the gym, and, and I bit, I bit, I bit all his moves. I, I stole everything he had. So I, I'm, I'm man enough to tell this man right now how much he means to he meant to me. This but, is your uh, first time coming clean, Ice. Thank I mean, I ain't, like I said, I ain't. I mean, he already know how I feel about him, but I ain't <laughs> seen. You know, it, that's the guess. The good thing about Facebook, you can talk to each other and everything. And, you know, he'll inbox me, champ, right. and this and that thing. And I respect that because I look at him, you know, I, I still look up to him. No matter what, I'm right. always looking at him. You know what I'm saying? He's a better fighter than me. I'm always looking up to him. And I was around him as a kid. But uh, hey, That's amazing. It's, it's Thank just you. Kind of, it. The respect is there. But, okay, we're we going to start off. Um, I, I got one, one name, uh, uh, 84 gold medals. The first loss, Paul Gonzalez. How did you feel about that? Well, the the first time we fought, uh, you know, it was uh, he was a uh, a gold medalist, and it was my like I think it was my my twelfth or thirteen pro fight, and it was uh, on national TV, so I was a little bit nervous. Uh, you know, it was my first t uh, twelve twelve round fight fight, so I mean, I mean, no 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 excuses. I mean, he was a better fighter at that at that time. Uh, and but uh, you know um, I I learned from that I learned from that mistake and I mean I, I I just learned from from those from that fight and ever since uh, you know I went on I, I went on a, a winning streak uh, I didn't lose for maybe several years after that uh, but that like I said uh, that was a learning experience for me uh, losing to that uh, to Paul Gonzalez after that a rematch I gave him a rematch and you know I stopped in the second round Damn. Uh, right right so so four. 14 fights later, 14 fights later, after you beat Billy Hardy, after you beat Kelvin Seabrooks, after you beat Lewis Curtis, all, all living legends, you got revenge against Paul Gonzalez. Uh, um, you know, you being a, Mex a Mexican, uh, L the Olympics was in L.A. in 84. You saw him. I'm sure you looked up to him. Did you ever – I think y'all guys fought in the Olympics. Amateurs too, right? No, we didn't fight amateurs. Okay, okay, fought, okay. No. I thought you mixed yeah. up with something. But okay, yeah. so he was the man. So you you lost to him. Right. You came back. You sucked it up. You got better. You beat, like I said, I just named the three great fighters you right. you fought before you fought him. You came back and you and you knocked him out. How good a feeling was that? Well, I mean, uh, it was. Um, I don't know. It was one of my total defenses, and to me, it was. Uh, it was not not really a more of a revenge, but it was just like uh, keeping keeping my my winning streak and defending my title, and I was gonna do whatever it take to to uh, to win the title. So 
and that's what I did. I mean, it, like I said, I mean, yeah, it was a, a sweet victory for me, but more than anything is, like I said, keeping my, my winning streak and my keeping my title defenses alive. Right, right, right. Um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, you, uh, who, who to you was your toughest fight? I had some several tough fights. I mean, uh, 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 Junior Jones, Rafael Vasquez, uh, Billy Hardy, the first fight. I mean, like I said, uh, I can't really pinpoint one type, one fight because, like I said, I had like three or four really tough fights. Okay, well, I'm going I'm to bring up one of them because I was there. Fernie, Fernie Morales. Right. That was a, that was a huge fight. Uh, you, you know, you, you had a little weight problems at that time. You know what I'm saying? We, I ain't trying to bring back the past, but you had a little weight problems. You came in, you made the weight, and uh, the guy came in and fought a hell of a fight. Uh, I think he ended up having brain damage, right? Right, right. He, uh, he he got he retired after that fight. Uh, he, he had surgery or something like that. Yeah, he had to retire. The war, bro, Bob. I'm I'm sitting ringside watching Jesse work the corner, and I'm just learning because I'm like I'm saying to myself, I said, I said, I think this fight. It's a little tougher than I think they thought it was gonna be. Mm-hmm. Right. And Fernando Morales came to fight, man. It was a, it was a war. And, yeah, uh, no, I mean, it was a tough. He, he gave me a tough fight. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a tough fight. But like I said, uh, you know, I mean, I've had, like, I had several tough fights, and maybe that, well, that was also a tough fight. But you know, um, like I said, I had several really tough fights, and and that that was one of also. Right. 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 I mean, can I ask y'all a question, man? Both of you guys are yeah. both professional both boxers. I, I never boxed, but only in the streets. No, uh, slap boxing. Ask, Go ahead. Before you ask that question, I was like, you know, whenever somebody makes you work and, and, and just the fight, I mean, it's, uh, it's it's not really like you have an easy fight or a tough fight. It's just, a, you know, you got to work. You got to accumulate points. You got to throw punches. You got to be active. And that makes you work harder and just like, you know, uh, makes you uh, – like a, make it feel like it's a tough fight. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Like, how do you stay focused going into a fight? You know what I'm saying? Because you know you good. So... I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm going to let the legend go second. I'm just going to say this. Um, Bob, one thing in the back of my mind that I always thought about, about training, about sparring, about fighting, was people die in this ring. hmm so, Right. I got to give myself the best opportunity to make weight, be strong, give them all. My, 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 my motto was, if I'm ready, I'm not worried about nobody else. Mm-hmm. And out of, out of 59 fights, it might have been a couple of fights that I wasn't 100%, but I was, I was good enough where I wasn't going to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, other things happen and everything, but uh, I don't know how you feel about that question. Well, yeah, I mean, every time I fight, I would be 100% ready. I mean, I, I really was dedicated, disciplined, and just like I, I took it serious because, like you said, it's it's a dangerous sport, and, and you know, uh, people have died in the ring. And, and one time I fought 15 rounds. I mean, it's uh, – I got to got, – I got uh, – I was able to, 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 to fight in that era of 15 rounds, and, and three more rounds after 12, it, it takes a lot of a toll on, on the body. So you got to just be ready mentally and physically – uh, not only like mentally, but physically, 100% ready. Just to, you know, and and like I said, have the discipline to go 12, 15 rounds if you have to. So, uh, Orlando, how happy were you about the fights going from 15 to 12? <laughs> well, it's a big relief, let me tell you. <laughs> After 12 rounds, how hard fights. Of twelve hard round fights, I mean it's it's uh it's it's really uh I mean it's really uh totally it's a lot of you know uh, I mean I was glad in a way I was glad that it came to to twelve rounds because you know going all fifteen rounds it, it really it's really exhausting I mean it takes a lot on the body and and I don't know how people in the sixties seventies they would do that like every every mm-hmm. week they would fight fifteen rounds I mean that's crazy like like wow I'm you know my respect for those guys but. I mean, you know, I'm glad that it came. I mean, they went down to 12 rounds because really, it takes after 12 rounds, and when you know, you take it takes a lot on, on the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It take a lot. I love. I remember like uh, watching Raging Bill Bull Bob. Uh, his wife wanted to have sex. Uh, Jake Lamada, and she and look, his face was puffy. He was beat up. He said, "Baby, I fight Joe in a week." <laughs> I'm like, 
Wow. So they have fought 15 mm. rounds like 11 days apart. Wow. And that's unbelievable. Crazy. You know what I'm saying, I know how I felt in the twelve round camp, a twelve round fight, camp six weeks, uh, six, five six different spawn partners every day, wow. fighting and how sore my body would be three, four, five days in a row. This right. guy ten days later. Yeah. Dang. And and people don't realize that the training is the hardest part. I mean, the fight, yeah, you can be, you can be, you have, you can you have an easy fight, you have a tough fight, but the training, you train for like maybe a week, uh, uh, I mean, three, four, six weeks, a month and a half, or six weeks, or whatever. I mean, it's the training takes its toll. Also, I mean, it's it's not that easy. It, I mean, but people don't realize the training that that one takes. Well, you know, I uh, I played basketball, of course, not pro or nothing like that, but I played basketball, football. Baseball, man, ain't nothing, nothing comparable to boxing. There's nothing. There's nothing that never made me want to quit. There's nothing that made me, I mean, it's just the training, uh, you know, going to Big Bear at five in the morning, running 4,000 feet above sea level. One day, you know, I saw um, t uh, Orlin Norris, after the, a world champ, I'm running Big Bear at 5.30 in the morning, and I saw him on the side of the road, uh, tired and can't go no more. <laughs> and I, I'm telling the world champ, like, come on, champ, come on, let's go. What you doing? Push yeah. yourself. And he started back running. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's just, man, man, boxing, bro, like he said, it's like you, these guys, you know what I'm saying, that suffer from brain damage, it's yeah. not from the fight. It's from training. Right. You know, you know, we, we got, Atlanta will have three, four, five fresh farm partners, so he fighting a 12-round title fight, so he going uh, 10 rounds, 12 rounds, with uh, three, four fresh guys. So every three rounds, they come in fresh. That's how you wow. get into it. So, hey, so, but let me ask you something, though, Money. Them spar, when y'all spar, is that like full contact, though? Uh, I mean, it's a few guys that get in their feelings and want to go hard. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> right, real, real professionals know how to spar, and, and, and you get the best out of the work. It's, it's right. Some, some young guys who trying to make a name for themselves, or somebody get mad because you whooping their ass, so they try to pick up the level. But like every time, this is what I would do, and I wasn't never really no no puncher, but because of my defense, I played with a lot of people in sparring, and, right. and I know Randall did too. I would if a guy tried to go hard, Bob, I would stop and say, "This is what you want to do." I'm asking you. Is, I would look at I would look at their trainer and say, "This is what y'all want to do." Y'all wanna y'all wanna finish like this? <laughs> that's let that's letting them know, okay, I'm finna I'm I'm just playing with you right now. Right. I can pick it up now and embarrass you. You know what I'm saying? You going hard for nothing. Yeah. Cause you're gonna lose anyway. It happens, it happens. And sometimes they they you know they they go out of line, but you know, it, it takes the, the adrenaline, but uh, you know, it, it, it does happen. But I really think that sparring is is to just to help each other out. I mean, you don't it's not really to who, it's not about winning or losing. I mean, it's about helping each other out. And, you know, you don't want to – you go halfway and you don't go all the way out. You just go halfway and just to get sharp and then work on conditioning and, and work on your skills and your sharpness. And that's what I think. What was your best training camp? Best training camp? I mean, I had several. I mean, like, when I was in California, I, I would train mostly in California and Houston. Uh, but, I mean, uh, most of my training camps were, were really good. But – you know, uh, I can't, you know, I can't really, really pick one, one training camp. But like I said, uh, I mean, I had a great time, uh, you know, when, when I was getting ready to fight uh, uh, Junior Jones, I was in Fort Huachuca and uh, Vernon Forge was over there. Uh, we, we, we played some hoops, we played some basketball, we read uh, and Vernon Forrest and somebody else, guy, I don't remember who it was, but, you know, it, it was, it was a great camp also getting in Fort Huachuca. I mean, like I said, I had several, several good camps. Okay. Okay. What what's your what's your biggest win? What's your favorite? What's your favorite fight? Um. Well, I mean, like I said, I guess I guess it has to be winning the title. Uh, I mean, winning the title. Uh, it was it was my dream come true, and uh, I went 15. I knocked I knocked out uh, Seabrooks in the 15th round, the last round, and so I guess that's must be my my one of my greatest fights ever. Wow. Evan Seabrooks, a great fighter. Uh. You knocked him out, uh, it came back, and knocked him out again. So he wanted – you stopped him. He, you gave him a rematch out of respect, and you stopped him again. Uh, 
when when did you I mean, I know I know for a fact. You I mean, I know you're a humble champion, you're a legend. I know for a fact, without you telling me, as good as you were, it bothered you that you didn't get the respect you deserved. That you can go places and people don't know who you were, but guys who weren't as good as you knew who they knew who they were. I know that bothered you. Because like I mean, I, I never been on your level, but I beat two world champ. I beat two Hall of Famers, and nobody know who my tail group. I mean, I could go. I could go any place. Sometimes it's a good thing because I see yeah. stars and stuff. They can't go nowhere. I don't have no problem with it, but right. it is what it is. Right. How did you feel about the respect you got? Well, I mean, it's. I mean, I don't. I mean, um, I, it's kind of hard to explain. But to me, it really didn't bother me. I mean. I, I what I wanted to do was I I mean my accomplishments and my goals I accomplished that and, and that's mainly what you know I wanted I mean respect that it comes along with with everything else that you do in, in the sport of boxing or whatever the, your achievements your accomplishments and uh, everything else comes with with it I mean but to me I mean getting respect for that or or getting the people to didn't have the, the respect that I deserve. I mean, that really didn't bother me. I mean, like I said, uh, for me, winning the title, defending my title, making history in boxing, that was my main goal and that was my priority. Hey, Ma, let me I'll jump in real quick, Ice. Can I jump in? I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. You, gonna go, Ice? you know, I, I hear you, I hear you, uh, Mr. Condesadas, and uh, you seem so humble, man. How did you maintain that level? And Martel, speaking of you up here, but you kind of like staying right here. So how do you do that, man? Because I couldn't have been great. Well, that's, that's the way I was brought up, I guess. I mean, that's the way I was brought up. And, and, and that I've always been this way. And uh, yeah, I'm, I've never changed. I'm the same person that I've always, I've always been. Uh, that's beautiful, yeah. man. That's a hum That humility is amazing. Go ahead, Ice. What did you finna say? Bob, let me break it down for you. Because Orlando, I know Bob from the neighborhood. We went to high school together. And he wanna he the best basketball player in our neighborhood. Uh I wanna explain to him because he's a, a a basketball guy first. Orlando Canazales is I don't wanna disrespect him. I wanna say Kobe, but I gotta say I, let me see. Okay, Jordan, Jordan the best two okay, I ain't gonna go by just one position. Okay, if you say if you say Jordan, Magic, LeBron, Tim Duncan, and Kareem is the top five greatest players ever. Right. Alonzo Gonzalez is in that conversation. Oh. For, for, you, for you not to even know him, he, he's on that level. He's, he's the greatest – okay, um, it's, it used to be 12 weight class. I, don't, I can't remember. How, I don't know how many weight classes he is right now. He's the best fighter of his weight class. So just to have his 12 weight class. I know in boxing it's 12. I, I can't remember. In boxing, in bass and pro, it's, it's a lot. It used to be 12 when I was amateur, but probably like 15, 16. He's the top 15th fighter in history. So, That's crazy. So he deserves, okay, Atlanta Canizales will be on the dream team. He's the dream team of boxing. That's how I break it down. That's it. He's on the dream team of boxing. The greatest wow. basketball team ever. He's the, the dream team of boxing. So now you understand who you're talking to right now. Absolutely. He's humble, and he's a nice guy. He's a little older now, so he's just smiling. But <laughs> did, did you ever talk trash when you was boxing? Never, never. That wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't my style of him. You know, that, uh, for me, it was all business, and, you know, I, I let my hands do all the talking, so <laughs> I never really, uh, you know, I was never a trash talker. I heard that he let his hands do the talking. I love it. <laughs> well, I mean, if if you had to, you got kids, I'm sure. And I'm sure your kids probably came to watch you fight. Was there ever a time when you was fighting and you kind of was like, you know what? I don't want my kids to see me doing this. I know both of you guys, you know, because it's a brutal game. Yeah. Well, my kids were, when I was in Borneo, they were young. And so they, they were little, so they, they didn't really uh, got to, to watch me fight now, I mean, I mean back then. So now they they watch me on, on videos. But how, how many kids I, you have? I have four. And none of them, never, none of them saw you fight. No, nah, they were young. They were they were not born yet. That was oh, good. Okay. 
So okay. he was he was able to enjoy his professional career without those distractions. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, why, why would you leave? Why would you leave Laredo and come to California with Jesse? Uh, for sparring partners, different sparring partners, also to get away from my hometown and my friends, my family, just, just to, uh, like I said, uh, have a training camp with with no distractions. Right. Who? Uh, let me see. Who? Yeah, Bob. Who to you? Who from Chicago? Who give more love as a basketball player? The what? Uh, all time they get the most love. As a basketball Isaiah? player, Isaiah. No, cause they be hating on Isaiah a lot. Yeah, they hate on Isaiah. They hate on Mark. They hate they Chicago. Okay, come on. Hey, D Wade. I would say D Wade. Hey, Orlando is D Wade of Laredo, Texas. Oh, <laughs> he the, the D Wade of Laredo, Texas. Um, two. They got two world champions. Is it is it only two or y'all got more now? No, just two. Okay. Only two world. How many people is in Laredo? What's that? How many people? Um, about two hundred fifty thousand. So he well, is that's a, a lot of people. Man. He is the coldest man in Laredo, Texas history. Two hundred fifty thousand. First ballot Hall of Famer. Um, great man, great fighter. Uh, he should have got a piece of her commercial. I see, uh, Mr. Candazales, you you was inducted into the Hall of Fame and. Uh, 2009, July 14th. Was that humbling for you, man? Uh, it was a great experience, uh, you know, being inducted. Uh, when I walked to the podium, I mean, it was, like I said, uh, when I retired from boxing, I know that one day I was going to be uh, called upon to be inducted. And uh, when I received the call, I was just, you know, excited and just thrilled about it. And uh, when I got there, I mean, it was like four days of just having fun and meeting people and, I mean, you got Lennox Lewis and uh, um, Brian Mitchell, and uh, I mean, it was it was a, a tremendous experience, and it's a wonderful experience to be inducted and to be recognized as, as one of the greatest, or, or, or not one of the greatest, but that's to be inducted to a lot to, uh, with all the greats on there who are inducted there. I mean, it was just marvelous because that's it's a prestigious group, and you know, dudes try to play it down. Go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna say, Chad, question. Who was your favorite fighter? Who was your idol? Who made you want to fight? Besides, well, well, I had several, but you know, my, my brother Gabby was like I said, he was my idol because I, I I would see him how because I was like fourteen and he was like eighteen, already fighting pro, and I would see his sacrifices he would make, like running in the rain in the snow and and chopping wood on, on, in the rain and like. So I mean him and and also uh, Ali was one of my favorites also Ali Leonard and Shuri Leonard and and Roberto Duran they were my 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 idols my great the best fighters that I would see on on TV. Okay, how how you doing on time, champ? I'm okay. Okay, uh, we I ain't gonna keep you. I think we almost did an hour so far. Uh, talk talk to me about. I always thought this was classy, Bob. They had uh back in the '90s, '80s, and '90s. Uh, it was guys who would. Uh, just start a boxing, uh, a boxing uh, company mm-hmm. with the trainers, managers, fighters, and everything. And Orlando was with one of them. Orlando, tell us about your Houston uh, experience. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I was uh, 17 when Bob Bob Spagnola, my my manager, he he uh, he called me up and said, "Hey, you want to sign with the Houston Boxing Association?" You know, I don't want to, you know, I said, you can come here to, to high school. Cause I, was, I was in high school. I was a senior. Said, you can come to high school over here and graduate over here. But, you know, I was 17, naive, and I, I know what I really wanted back then. I mean, I mean, I was boxing, uh, yes, amateur, but uh, my pro career was, was, you know, I wasn't uh, too sure about it. Uh, so, anyways, I turned 18, and then Bob keep, keep calling me, asking me, hey, you still want to come? I mean, he would call me, like, once a month just to keep in contact and just keep in touch with me and to see how's everything going. And like I said, he, he's always wanted me to, to go and sign with HBA. But after, three, after my third professional fight, I decided to go there. And, I mean, it, it was a great experience. I mean, Ms. Abercrombie, the, the lady who was in charge of the Houston Boxing Association, was a wonderful lady. I mean, he, she treated us like like – like royalty, I mean, it was a great experience, and and I mean, I, it was a great ride. I can't, I can't complain. I mean, I can't, um, you know, like I said, I, I don't have no regrets. I mean, I, I accomplished my goal, what I wanted to do, and 
I wanted one to do do in boxing. I mean, I, you know, and and they they helped me. They helped me a lot in, in throughout my 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 in, throughout my life and my career. They helped me a lot. It was a great experience, and I give him thanks. Uh, the Houston Boxing Association, Sacramento and Robert Spagnola. Okay, hey, Bob Spagnola. Let's give a shout out to Bob Spagnola. He gave me a donation when I first went over to my gym two years ago. But, uh, Bob, don't you know the uh, Iceman, George Gervin poster and, you know, the favorite posters, you know, in basketball? Yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, number one. Emmanuel Stewart and uh, Amber Crombie, Amber Crombie had the two best posters in boxing. Uh, I think it was uh, Mike McCallum. I mean, I'm sorry. Mill McCory, uh, Tommy, and uh, Billy Paul. Wow. And on a poster, it was uh, Frank Tate, Orlando, and who else? Who else was it? Was it Pat Way? Uh, Tony Tucker, I think. Uh, I don't remember who else, but it was, I know it was Tony Tucker, Frank Tate, myself, Gabby, and some uh, Calvin Grove. Right on, on the on the Houston. What was it called? The HBA. The, yeah, uh, HBA. HBA uh, yeah, yeah, boxing. Yeah, that, I thought that was really awesome. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Hey, hey, Orlando, I'm gonna ask you a question, man. Was there ever a fight, man, that you? You lost and you felt you was robbed. Um, uh, referral of Vasquez. When I when I move up in weight to challenge the referral of Vasquez for the junior featherweight title, WBC, uh, WBA title. Mm -hmm. That was a close fight. I, I think I had I thought I had won, but you know they I lost a split the uh, split decision. Yeah, it seemed like those split decisions, man, kind of go uh, all real a little bit, uh, Montel, right? Cause dudes be losing them and they be pissed, man, behind that. I mean, bro, it's um, you gotta understand one thing. Boxing is uh, I don't know, it's one of the only unorganized sports in the world. I know it's the biggest unorganized sport in the world. When, when you say unorganized, what do you mean, though? It's no one commissioner that runs it all. Oh. I think the government should come in over boxing. I know they're gonna hate me for saying it. Get rid of the promoters, cause a lot of them are dirty. A lot of them got a. Uh, Referees, you know what I'm saying, in their pocket. Judges oh. in their pocket. Uh, I, man, it's just, I, I done been to so many, I done been, I done seen so many backstabbing, dirty, conniving things that are even, I love the game, but I hate the business of boxing. And that's why I, I left the game. I, I retired 2011. I started training a little bit. And I, I just got, after my, after my uh, last two fights, I just kind of got away from the game. And um, I just got back in boxing the last couple years. And that was because I love the game, but it's just the outside business of game, uh, boxing. Um, I, I don't know if it's one fighter in America that's not been robbed. Uh, amateur fight, pro fight. I, we have all been robbed, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's the what, nature of this business? Uh, what you guys say? Is that the nature of this business, Mr. Canazales? Yeah, it's, it's, well, I mean, it's unorganized. I mean, it's, uh, I don't want to comment on that because it's kind of, you know, I don't want to get people. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Ain't no telling who might be watching this money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, uh, you know, I'm fortunate. No, my, my, my career over, so I don't care yeah. what they do. I mean, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, it should it should be a sports, but it's it, it's you know, and people, it's more of a business than a sport, and that's right. that's. I mean, it is what it is. Like. But you know, it's crazy. It happens in all sports, though. Almost. I mean, when the people got a best in interest, that happens. Yeah. So, um, uh, I just want to ask you, Mister uh, Candazales. So, you you boxed and you did all of that. When it came towards the end for you, and I might be jumping the gun, but I just want to ask this. Like, I know you guys still had that itch, man, and want to throw it. Like, you, you know, you still feel like you could do it. When did you know it was over? Well, my, my last fight, uh, I fought uh, Frankie Toledo, and, uh, you know, I, I thought uh, I, I felt burned out. I mean, I was... How old were you? I was 33 years old. Okay. 33. The last fight I was 33, I said, you know what, I think I'm, I decided it's time to, to do something else. And so, you know, I went back to school, but I, I retired, uh, I said... You know, after so many, 23 years in the sport of doing boxing, 23 years of doing boxing, I said, you know what, I think it's time to, to do something else. And that's that's what I did. It's amazing, man. I still have, I, I was still healthy. I had, you know, everything. I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, I just say, you know, I, I don't want to get hurt because I know it's a dangerous sport. I say, you know what, it's it's time to, to, to move on, to do something else. Right, right, right. Well, you had a great career. 50 wins, 37 knockouts, five losses, one draw. Uh, 
I mean, but That's you huge. know, uh, Richard DeJesus, uh, Junior Jones, uh, Paul Gonzalez, you you lost to you know great fighters. Um, you don't have none. Uh, I mean, we you know we don't never accept losing, and you know it bothers me about certain fighters or whatever. But you know you can't. And we, we always the hardest on ourselves, Bob. Mm-hmm. I mean, same thing as basketball and everything, but uh. But I think boxing more so though, because it's one on one, and I say it's the world's toughest sport. Sense. I don't sense. care what nobody say. That makes sense because we ain't got to worry about our team ain't missing a layup. Or- <laughs> right. <laughs> you missed if you miss Bobby the Weaving, that's your ass, money. Yeah, but then again, you 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 you're counting on you're depending on three three judges, three persons to to judge a fight, and sometimes it's you know it's not that good either. Right. It depends. No way, yeah. Look, Bob, it depends who the promoter is. Right. Where, where the fight is, you might fall. Uh, five of my eight losses has been in someone's hometown. So I'm not making no excuses. I'm just saying five of my eight losses. I fought. I lost in someone's hometown, but that's just a whole nother story. But <laughs> that's for another show. Man, a whole nother show called Life. <laughs> called Life. But, uh, hey, but the difference in that purse, though, Ice, when you lose. Yeah, yeah. The next, see, in, in, in pro and basketball and baseball, you can lose the championship. You're going to make the same amount of money. Right. Bro, I, look, I ain't going to tell everybody. I, I, sorry, in my book. Anyway, but I made millions of dollars. My, I lost. My next fight was for 25000 I was like, man. This is crazy. I talked talk to Chris Bird. Chris Bird said, "Now nah, I went from a million to fifteen thousand, so I wasn't even as worse off as him." But wow. that's, that's that's you know it's a saying of boxing: you're only as good as your last fight. Yeah, wow. what it is. Um, this guy, the guy you talking to, Bob, could be considered the most underrated fighter in history. In history, I, I'm okay. We say I can name five fighters. I could say probably. Tied for the most underrated in history, but Bob is probably five million fighters. So I just show you where he stands. This, this guy's a le- like, like I said, just like when you feel a sitting across talking to Mark, Mark McGuire, or one of them guys, whatever. This is how I feel talking to him. He, um, I asked him to be on my show. He answered me in five minutes and said yes. That's love. He my friend. He a legend. He a Hall of Famer. I'm gonna say bow down to Orlando Gonzalez. Much respect. Thank you for coming on the show, champ. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me, having me, inviting me. And, uh, you know, uh, it's an honor. And thank you. Thank you for having me. We're on the same team, champ. We was on the same team. Same coach, same team. And I learned so much from him. Thank you. Man, thank respect. You. And we'll see y'all next week. All right. Thank you. My Mattel man. Mattel Griffin, his ice boxing show, Orlando Canizales, Mattel, light heavyweight champion of the world. We up out of here, baby. The best bat way ever in history. The best, hands down. We up out of here, y'all. Y'all be good. Peace. Thank you.